This episode of Internet Today is brought to you by Purple Mattress. America is back. Yep, you're right, Elliot. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. <laughs> he needs to shut his mouth. That's your line. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, as of Tuesday, uh, the two states that have been the most restrictive in the nation regarding coronavirus protocols, California and New York, have officially reopened with nearly every single restriction removed, marking the first step back to normal for a lot of people. And we'll see how this goes, but uh, we, we remain optimistic. I mean, we're waxed, we're vaxxed, we're ready to party. I can tell you already, just today, uh, you know, things were fine. They let everyone out of the house, and you bring that many bodies out into the world, that's a lot of heat. Yes. And it's created... Made Los Angeles very hot. It has made the city unbearably hot. Go back inside, it's yeah. too hot outside. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, we're, we're very happy to have things uh, back to normal. Uh, but we, we do have a whole bunch of uh, random non-COVID-related news for you today. So let's stop wasting time and get started with an online petition that we think has a lot of merit. And it's something that we would definitely like to see. We've said this before, and we'll continue to say it and cover it, but the people have been, co they've been cooped up for so damn long. Every, everyone just wants to get out of their homes and they want to watch a little bit of chaos. We've yes. been deprived of chaos. That's the only reason that we can think of that people online have come together to try and convince the richest man in the country and the world to single-handedly destroy one of, if not the most expensive and famous pieces of art in the history of the world. We're talking about Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa mm -hmm. and Mr. Jeff Bezos. Yes. This is the perfect example of the evolution of madness that we've all endured since last March. Because a petition for Jeff Bezos to buy and eat the Mona Lisa was actually started last year, but it has blown up in popularity and in backers in just the past few days. Now, first of all, can he afford it? Oh, absolutely. Yes. So the Mona Lisa is currently, I mean, this is up for debate, but uh, the most recent estimate is that it is valued at a measly $60 billion. Yeah, the Louvre would have you believe that it's priceless, but there's always a price. Everybody has a price. Now, that's obviously chump change for a man like Bezos, who is currently worth nearly $200 billion and also scheduled to fly into space in his own spaceship next month. Yeah. But can he actually eat the painting? Well, after some quick Google searches, it appears as though humans could, in fact, eat an oil painting and survive with well, maybe a, a stomach ache. Uh, now, will Jeff Bezos devour the Mona Lisa? The ultimate question. We're not sure. He hasn't made a statement on the subject, and we are waiting. But there is a growing community online who are demanding it. The petition that uh, only recently started to uh, pick up steam is, is simple in its demand, with the title exclaiming, We want Jeff Bezos to buy and eat the Mona Lisa. And the full description reads as follows. Nobody has eaten the Mona Lisa, and we feel Jeff Bezos needs to take a stand and make this happen. This is the new NFTs. Yes. NFTs are over. It's all about buying real physical art and eating it. Performative art. I mean, this has a long history in the world of uh, rich people not knowing how to spend their money right. Back in the 1800s, when they started going into those, those uh, pyramids up in Egypt, they started finding these ancient artifacts and these bodies that were super preserved from like 5,000 years back. And the first thing they did was send those bodies back to Europe and start literally fucking eating them. Look this mm. up. They ate the mummies. When you smash they did them with a stick, uh, the dust cloud comes out. They it's had cool parties looking. called unwrapping parties where a bunch of rich assholes in Europe we yeah. gather around, unwrap a mummy, and eat the fucking thing. Well, we're bringing that shit Just back. Just to see what it tastes like. It also coincides with like this rise in, uh, in uh, not, not specifically for Jeff Bezos, but this rise like in uh, controlling influencers' lives. Like you pay a certain amount of money, <laughs> yeah. and they'll do something throughout the day. Yeah. Have you seen like the websites that offer that ability? Yeah, it's it's a little weird. Um, yeah, that's that's the future. But uh, if enough people get behind this, I could see maybe Jeff Bezos tossing the idea Eat around the in his painting, mind. painting, Jeff. Exactly. You say it's not that crazy because they dug up some mummies and then rich people were like, yeah, sure, let's do this. There's a long history. Of so if, J this. if Jeff Bezos wants to be a real merchant of chaos, he will do it. They've, they've already mapped the Mona Lisa down to like the micrometer level. Like it's been scanned and Just scanned. Just reprint it. Depths. Hey, you could literally 3D print a new Mona Lisa using the technology we have today and no one would ever know the difference. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. when we filmed this episode, the numbers have probably gone up. But when we filmed it, the goal of 7,500 signatures was already nearly filled. Mm -hmm. And we can only assume that the amount of supporters will quickly surpass that goal. But again, we must ask, why? Yes. Why? Uh, I mean, is this a commentary on the obscene wealth of America's elite? Is this yet another critique on the world of art? Is it further proof that we're living in an alternate timeline that is constantly testing our limits of what we consider reality? Let's see what the supporters of this effort think. Yeah. This is the most important petition in modern times. 
Jeff Bezos needs to eat the Mona Lisa to save the world. It's, go it's the only thing that can set us back on the right path when time was diverted yeah. uh, because of Coney 2012 and Harambe. Yeah. Uh, and we have the pieces that are currently able to bring us back on that correct path. We're Jeff Bezos eating the Mona Lisa and the TikTok uh, monkey dying. Yeah, we're in a, in a sort of quantum entanglement. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, Jeff Bezos needs to eat the Mona Lisa and then immediately get on his rocket, which will sadly, tragically explode <laughs> immediately after. In a video lunch. game. <laughs> in a video game with his video game brother. In Minecraft. Anyway, here's some more comments. Who, yeah, who else is going to eat it? <laughs> I, I mean, mean, yeah. If you told me, sight unseen, that someone was going to buy and eat the Mona Lisa, I, you, the only thing that would come to mind would be Bill Gates, Elon Musk, and Jeff Bezos. Yeah. Three terrible people. It does seem like more of an Elon thing. He's, he's a lot more uh, vulnerable to peer pressure, it seems like. Oh, people uh, demand that I eat the Mona Lisa? Elon, well, then I will do it. Like, if you, if you really think about it, Elon lets himself get bullied constantly. Yeah. Yeah, he is constantly uh, at the whim of whatever the perception of himself on the internet yeah, exists. Yeah, it's, it's kind of sad. He's so a you prisoner imagine, of his own persona. You'd imagine he'd be, he's been pretty miserable the past couple of weeks. Yeah. The internet really turned on him after the whole Bitcoin well, thing. And then he, he reversed course or tried to, I don't know. Yeah, he uh, he's realizing they're not calling their daddy two anymore. Sides. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, some more comments. <laughs> Gobble the Lisa. <laughs> I'm a Jeff the Bezos. I eat in a painting. I gobble a piece. <laughs> The Mona Lisa has been undigested for too long. <laughs> I agree. And then, sick of waking up to a world where Bezos has not consumed the Mona Lisa. Yeah. Oh. Now, there's only one real solution. Jeff Bezos buys the Mona Lisa, brings it with him into space, and eats it in orbit as a snack. With the whole world watching. Yeah. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe tops it with a little astronaut ice cream. Yeah. This is freeze-dried. It's delicious. His brother asks for a slice, and Jeff says, oh, no. No, this is my Mona Lisa. Get your own. <laughs> you will have to buy. Why don't you have a uh, some kind of Rembrandt or something? Yes. Too big to fit on the uh, on board. The Rembrandts are very big. Now, there's one problem here. One obvious problem, as pointed out by Forbes, a legitimate business publication who reported on Jeff Bezos potentially eating Mona Lisa. Mm -hmm. From their coverage, quote: One roadblock. The painting is almost certainly not for sale at any price. Owned by the French government, the Mona Lisa is the most famous work of art in the world and the crown jewel of France's Louvre Museum. I know I said it wrong. Mm -hmm. The largest in the world. France is unlikely to ever want to part with such an important national symbol, especially since proceeds from selling the painting would be a drop in the bucket for a government that brings in more than 1 trillion euros in tax revenue every year. They really got up with the tax jab at the end. Yeah. 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 Uh, you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? <laughs> we have to pivot here and uh, we have to divert away from the Mona Lisa, which is impossible for him to buy and devour, and make him focus on, uh, 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 what's his name? Napoleon's penis. Yeah. Which is here in America, apparently. Eat the penis, Jeff. Yes. Come on, it'd be really cool if you did. Yeah, we, should, we need to start a new petition for Jeff Bezos to eat Napoleon's penis. Yeah. It'll be like jerky on a long trip when he goes up to space. Consume his essence. Yes. I mean, these rich people, they're all into some weird shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he probably does believe that uh, consuming Napoleon's essence via his penis would give him even more power. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, I mean, it, I guess it seems pretty unlikely that this is going to Unless he steals happen. it. That, that could also and, happen. And, uh, you know, the best thieves in the world, Jeff can afford them. We haven't had a good heist in a while. Yeah, it's like national treasure, but like the French national treasure. And instead of like stealing it to... I don't remember what the movie was about. But instead of that, he's stealing it to eat it. Yeah. But if uh, anyone is in a perfect position to convince Bezos to eat the Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, it's definitely whoever wound up buying that seat next to him on the first ever trip to orbit on Blue Origin. $28 uh, million. Dollars. Yeah, we spoke about the auction last week. And at that point, the reserve seat, which would trap you in a tiny, tiny space, with Jeff Bezos was only up to a few million dollars, a steal. Mm -hmm. But obviously the price started jumping exponentially as the auction drew to a close. So who will be blasting off on July 20th? And how much did they pay exactly? According to the New York Times, quote, the auction winner's name will be released in roughly two weeks, according to a video on Blue Origin's website. The auction ticket went for $28 million, but the winner must also pay a 6% buyer's commission, bringing the total cost to nearly 30 million, which would be hilarious if they were like, oh, Ah, man, 6%. Um, can, I, uh, can I return this? Yeah, yeah. Mm. You, know, you mentioned, like, being trapped up there with Jeff Bezos. And, like, you know, if Jeff Bezos, if this is all just a ruse for Jeff Bezos to murder this person, would there be any legal recourse? He will be not only, like, you talk about international waters. This is 
beyond any yeah. of the Earth's uh, legal purview. You can uh, presumably do anything up there. It's like that, on a private aircraft. It's like that slice of land near Idaho and Wyoming. Yeah. Yeah. Anything goes. But maybe this, look. So Jeff Bezos takes this guy up, spends the 10 minutes up in there just slashing him to death. Just yeah. painting the whole fucking capsule red with this man's viscera. And he comes back down. He walks out. He's covered in it. Like, yeah, yeah I, I killed him. There's nothing you can do about it, police. Or you like, you, you get up there, Mr. And you're police. Like, you're like, no, it's hey, buddy, it's safe. You can take the suit off, but you keep your suit on, and then you like open Inject one of the hatches. Him. <laughs> there he goes. Boom. <laughs> but maybe, maybe that's why ex-president Donald Trump came up with and rushed the space force yeah. into being because he knew that Jeff Bezos was going to do this. Yeah, space crimes are on the rise <laughs> from zero to. Yeah. Wasn't there an actual space? There was a space crime recently. Yeah, there was that woman we talked about a while back on Weekly Weird. She, uh, she like, was stalking her, her like, ex-wife. From space? From, from the ISS or some yeah. shit. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Space crime. Should have used ExpressVPN. But they're not sponsoring today. We can't talk anyway, about it. Anyway, since we're on the topic of absolutely ridiculous auctions, mm -hmm. Joe Exotic has officially entered the NFT space, mm -hmm. right when the value of these items seems to be finally really bottoming out. And his popularity is probably yeah. at an all-time low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so after his failed attempts to convince two separate presidents <laughs> to grant him a pardon, he's now using his time in prison to continue to raise money to spend on efforts to get him out of prison, where he's currently serving a 22-year sentence for his involvement in a murder-for-hire plot against that bitch, <laughs> Carol Baskin. Uh. The NFT auction, which is scheduled to start on the 18th, will reward winning bidders with not just digital collectibles, but also their real-life counterparts. So I guess if you want to own a piece of Joe Exotic history and have a digital backup for some reason, now's your time to get your hands on it. Maybe he's auctioning off that arm that his employee uh, had bitten off by a tiger. I mean, or, that could definitely or, be a, an or NFT. Or any, any of the uh, you know mummified corpses of the various tigers that he illegally euthanized and were dug up on his property. Y'all want these tiger bones? He's not a good person, guys. No, no, no. <laughs> now, but here's some info from an official press release. Joe Exotic, former zoo operator, global meme sensation, and television star, is, is launching his NFT from federal prison in Fort Worth, Texas. As a part of his collaboration with Moore, the public will gain access to purchase 3D renderings sold alongside real-life tangible collectibles. Collectibles include Joe's favorite pistol and holster, Commonly worn jackets as seen on Tiger King, adult film star Rachel Starr's bikini as pictured on the series, and digital artworks and tokens. That's right, you can buy his gun, which is apparently legal, I guess. That's a, that's a piece of history right there. Yeah, hey, want to check it out? Guess whose gun this is. You know how many tigers I've killed with this gun? <laughs> All of them. Uh, sometimes uh. you gotta put a tiger down. Mm. Regarding his foray into the crypto space, Joe Exotic himself had this to say. I'm really grateful to the Moore team for giving me a platform to give back to my loyal fan base. It's great to have a voice via blockchain technology, and I'm honored to be the first to kick off Moore's celebrity NFTs. I hope whoever purchases my favorite belongings is able to give them a well-deserved home. Being able to auction off collectibles makes me feel connected with the outside world, especially without my cats by my side. Whether you love me or hate me for what you think I've done, there's no doubt that everyone wants a piece of the Tiger King. <laughs> Buddy, it's been a year and two I'm months. selling a couple of NFTs. I'm as gay as a $3 bill. <laughs> and now, for a lot more than the cost of a $3 bill, you can buy my gun. He should have sold a NFT of a $3 bill with his face on it. <laughs> with the pride flag all over it. Yeah, it, you know, this pride month it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. We yeah. You know, and you are obligated. <laughs> yeah, if he puts to, it out there, you have to buy it. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, in addition to the NFT and memorabilia auction, Joe Exotic is also apparently launching his own line of weed <laughs> called Joe Exotic Cannabis. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it seems as though Joe Exotic thinks the fame and fascination of the popular Netflix doc will continue. It's been over a year. Yeah. He's really not a great person, despite being an entertaining and absurd character. There is a drama series or a movie or something coming. Yeah, with Nicolas might, Cage. Which, yeah, it might revitalize. You're going to want to get your hands on these collectibles before, uh, you know, you see the, the the big Nicolas Cage bump. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's, that's probably true. Yeah. There's, I don't know. I guess we'll see how these this initial uh, drop <laughs> goes for Joe. I remember when he, like, what was it, like, Trump's last week in office and he had the giant stretch limo pulled over or pulled up behind the prison. Where you're Humiliating. Yeah. yeah. 
They were just, just waiting out away. there, keeping the champagne cold. Hey, hey, go pick up some more ice. It's melting here. We need uh, the cold. He's gonna get champagne. out any minute now. Yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. The whole, the whole thing. Just... Ugh. Embarrassing. Speaking of legal battles, though, it looks like Triller is continuing to file lawsuits <laughs> against people who may or may not have watched their pay-per-view boxing match between Jake Paul and Ben Askren. They are attempting to sue even more YouTubers who'd streamed the fight, and even going so far as to sue at least one Instagram user who simply commented that they had watched the fight for free. Now, uh, so far, by the way, there there doesn't seem to be an update uh, regarding Triller's lawsuit against H3H3, but these latest filings, according to information acquired by Insider.com, show just how far this media company is willing to go in order to recoup potential losses. Yeah, from their reporting. On June 3rd, Triller filed a lawsuit against Matthew P. Space, who it says owns the 2200 subscriber YouTube channel Eclipse. The complaint includes a screenshot of a live stream that shows it had 257 views, with the suit alleging the stream, quote, has resulted in damages suffered by plaintiff by stealing and diverting at least 300 unique viewers of the illegal and unauthorized viewings of the broadcast. Uh, the most recent lawsuit Triller filed on June 11th alleges the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Ohio that Jaron Swords, what's with these guys' names? <laughs> I don't know. Jaron Swords pirated the stream. The complaint, which was obtained by Insider, says Swords commented on the Instagram page of Ryan Kavanaugh, a co-owner of Triller, writing that he had, quote, watched the Jake Paul fight for free, and, quote, he can't sue me. <laughs> I'll show you, kid. <laughs> Kavanaugh responded by writing, give me your real name and we can check about that. Oh, my God. According to the suit. Insider was unable to confirm these Instagram <laughs> posts. The lawsuit seeks damages up to $150,000. So, yeah, apparently you can't even joke about watching a Triller match without facing a potential life-altering lawsuit. That's tempting now, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> don't touch the stove. <laughs> don't don't comment on Triller posts on Instagram saying you stole their fight. Yeah, that guy will... <laughs> you won't sue me. Oh, yeah? Here I go. Uh, so, yeah, to everyone who commented the same joke over and over again online where they said, I pirated the fight and I still want my money back. You better, boy, you better watch out. Yes. Yeah. This extremely litigious company will take that as an admission of copyright infringement and just straight up go after your ass. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> they're trying to scare people into just not even, like, commenting on this because it might lead people to pirate it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. This is like some Metallica Napster shit. Like, just you just like, uh, you find a, like a bar that you don't like because they were mean to you once. They threw you out for being too drunk or something. You go in and you, you write on. What's the Wi-Fi? No, you write on uh, Instagram. Like, hey, <laughs> hey, I was down at Tin Horn Flats and they were yeah. showing the fight to everybody. Yeah. And they said you wouldn't sue them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways. That's actually a good idea. We have a lot more news to get to. But uh, first, let's take a quick second to thank today's sponsor. And uh, it's perfect timing because uh, their products are going to help you keep cool during this already scorching summer. As the world becomes increasingly uncomfortable, we're all looking for ways to get as much comfort as we can. There's just so much going on right now. And we're finally getting back out into the world, realizing that it is still exhausting. And now it's also getting increasingly hot. So it's just uncomfortable all around. Luckily, back at home, you'll always be able to count on the comfort of a Purple mattress. That's because Purple is comfort reinvented. Only Purple has The Grid, a stretchy gel material that's amazingly supportive for your back and legs while cushioning your shoulders, neck, and hips. We don't know how it does it, it's just fantastic. But because of how it's designed, the grid doesn't trap air. Air actually circulates and flows through it, so you'll never overheat. The grid bounces back as you move and shift, unlike memory foam, which remembers everything and has craters and divots. Ugh. And right now, you can try your Purple mattress risk-free with free shipping and returns. Financing is available, too. Well, they sent us some pillows, and uh, it is uh, really helping, especially as the, the heat wave creeps up. So it's nice I, to have. Yeah, and the, yeah, the, the airflow thing. I, I sweat a lot when I sleep, and I have never... Woken up to sweat on my my uh, purple pillow. There you go. Yeah. Purple really is comfort for an uncomfortable world. And right now, you'll get 10% off any order of $200 or more. So go to purple.com slash todaydaily10 and use our promo code todaydaily10. That is purple.com slash todaydaily10. Promo code todaydaily10 for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Purple.com slash todaydaily10. Promo code todaydaily10. Terms do apply. Back to the news now. And with uh, everything going on, you might have forgotten... We've got an entire Summer Olympics coming up over in Tokyo. Yeah, can you believe it? The Olympics are actually happening. Yeah, this is usually a pretty big deal, but it's been increasingly hard to get excited about this this time around for a, a lot of reasons. I mean, first off, it was supposed to happen last summer. Yeah, we've already forgotten about it. Just just this, give up. This was supposed to have already occurred, but yeah. obviously... Much like Top Gun 2. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't even care anymore. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it obviously it didn't because of COVID. Yeah. Um, and then it was up in the air for a while, whether or not it was even going to happen this year. Apparently, 83% of citizens in Japan were begging for the government not to move forward with yeah. it. But fuck them. Yeah. We're doing it anyway. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. also, yeah, the sunk cost fallacy. That's the first winner of this year's Olympics because they're, they're happening. They are. Look, guys, we put so much time and money and effort into planning this. We sacrificed millions upon millions of tax dollars in order to bring the Olympics to I, Japan. I don't care if this turns out to be some Delta variant super spreader event that plunges <laughs> into the apocalypse. We, we spent a lot of money. Yeah, are these stadiums that we built for this going to be empty for the next 10 years, 20 years before they're demolished? Sure. But we got to at least fill them up once or twice. Yeah. Anyway, you'd also have to assume that a lot of the athletes weren't able to train as much or as effectively as they would have liked because of all the restrictions last year. Uh, mainly, it's just the general vibe we're getting is that people are going to want to like actually go out and do shit this summer instead of sitting inside and watching pretty esoteric sports on the TV. Yeah. I'll catch the best ofs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Either way, the 2021 Summer Olympics in Tokyo, they officially start on July 23rd. And like previous host cities, Tokyo is already preparing for an all-out fuck fest between the young, yeah. virile, horny athletes who will be competing. For That's why they the want world. this so bad. Their birth rate. They need to get the birth rate back up. And how? what better way to have not only bring the birth rate up, but have a, a new race of like super children mm -hmm. with the best genes. Yeah. You have the Olympics in your country. Exactly. I get it now. So yeah, it, they, it, they're preparing for it, or at least they're preparing for it while also telling all of the athletes that they cannot have sex with each other because that would be in clear violation of social distancing protocols. They must instead take all of the condoms that Tokyo is providing Back to their home countries, where they can then freely have sex with whomever they please. Hey guys, here's here's a bunch of condoms, but don't, but use, don't them. use them. Well, that would be a violation. All these tight toned bodies that you see just walking all over the place. I know you'd love to just suck and fuck everyone you see here, and I know you're used to doing that at previous Olympics. I mean, but as we've covered before, the Olympic Village is a, a yeah. reportedly a giant orgy. They really should just burn it down afterwards, just on account of that. But that's the thing is, it's like, look, seal it off. Mm -hmm. Do the yeah. quarantine. Fuck bubble. And make, then, a, make a fuck a, bubble. <laughs> it's a fuck bubble. Yeah. Yeah. Do what the, the NBA figured this all out last summer, and that was just dudes. Like, you just put all the athletes in a fuck bubble. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, anything you goes. You bring in the prostitutes. Yeah. And you only have a problem when that one player flies to Atlanta and goes to the strip club without telling I, anyone. I just wanted some chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand. The, yeah, the chicks are they are the They named the wings after me. <laughs> Who anyway. was that? I can't, I can't remember, oh, but uh, but no, they should like it, it. The Olympic Village should be sealed off. Yeah, and and you shouldn't open the door because it lets the stank out. Yeah, yeah, and it should just be a giant orgy. It should be. Yeah, way entertaining. They should have all the way athletes sleeping in one big room where every surface is a mattress, <laughs> a purple mattress, and so it doesn't mirror, get too hot. Mirrors on the ceiling. <laughs> Anyway, this is Reuters. Yeah. Tokyo Olympic organizers plan to give away about 150,000 condoms <laughs> at next month's games, but are telling athletes to take them home rather than use them in the Olympic Village where social distancing rules and coronavirus measures are the top priority. Large numbers of condoms have been given out at the Games since the 1988 Seoul Olympics to raise awareness of HIV and AIDS, and organizers said the International Olympic Committee had requested their continued distribution. But athletes have been told to keep their distance from each other, meaning fewer opportunities to mingle and more. Quote, the distribution of condoms is not for use at the athlete's <laughs> village, but to have athletes take them back to their home countries to raise awareness of HIV and AIDS issues, said Tokyo 2020 in an emailed response to questions by Reuters. Uh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely going to happen. Yeah. Uh, I'll be sure to put these in the, the bottom of my suitcase so I... You know, they're just there for the flight home. Is Ryan Lochte going to be there? He's trying. He's <laughs> trying. He feels like he should know by now. He has failed, like, a bunch of attempts to get into the Olympics, oh. and I think he has one more chance to get into the Olympics. But, oh. no, he is not in it currently. Oh, damn. But uh, it would... Look, what are the Olympics without I, an American yeah. going there and causing trouble? Ryan Lochte, you guys, uh, I'm older, I'm wiser, I figured it out. And then, like, he, the first night he just gets drunk and starts, like, pulling the his Yakuza. eyes The Yakuza! Oh, we're here in Japan! The Yakuza <laughs> tried to kidnap yeah. me! Ryan uh, Lochte has been sent home for using all 150,000 condoms. Yeah. 
So um, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting certainly to see how they go about making sure that all these world class athletes abide by these protocols, and we're sure that there will be no shortage of stories and drama coming out of this year's Olympics, considering how tough it's going to be for everyone involved. Yeah, there's going to be a lot. I, I'm interested to see how this all like like leading up to the days before how like uh oh uh, someone came here and uh, there's already a massive virus spread because everyone's in the same area. Yeah, just I mean I I'm sure it'll go off fine, but like yeah, we've learned a lot in the past year and a half with the, like it, how to properly. It'll uh, just feel things, underwhelming. But, like the thing most people turn in for is like the opening ceremonies, and it's like how are they planning on doing that without a fuck ton of people? I don't know. I don't know. They're going to have uh, avatars in the crowd clapping. It's Japan. Yeah, that's so, true. There you go. Uh, but if you, uh, if, if, you know, you want to be a part of the Olympics, compete in the Olympics, you got to qualify. And one athlete recently had their chances at gold medal glory ripped away thanks to, of all things, a delicious burrito. According to CNN, quote, Olympic runner Shelby Houlihan said that she... <laughs> Shelby Houlihan here yeah, said that she had been banned from the sport for four years following a positive test for anabolic steroids that she attributes to eating a pork burrito. Uh, Houlihan said she was devastated to learn of the suspension from the Athletics Integrity Unit, or the AIU, an independent body that combats doping, after she tested positive for nandrolone. Houlihan said in a post on Instagram Monday that a burrito she ate before the test contained pig organ meat, or offal, which she said can lead to a positive test for nandrolone. A study funded by the World Anti-Doping Agency, or WADA, found trace amounts of nandrolone can be found in that kind of meat and warned about the possibility of false positive. The ban will prevent the 28-year-old from competing in upcoming U.S. Olympic trials and the Tokyo Olympic Games. You absolutely hate to see it, but this definitely seems like where you, you know, uh, you call down the Burger King's like, yeah, you failed the drug test, you can't, we're, we're firing you, and you're like, no, I ate a poppy seed yeah. bun. Because you went home and Googled, like, what could mm -hmm. po potentially yeah. cause... False, yeah. false positive. Uh, yeah, I had a burrito, and it had... Uh, Pork organ meat. Awful. They're like, what, would it have brains and intestines? Yeah, I love it. Sorry. It's my favorite meal. Wouldn't have known. It's the only way I can keep running. Yeah, every 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 top-tier athlete loves eating fucking discarded pig organ meat. Yeah. It's the, it's the secret. It is the secret. But uh, now you know why. Because it produces anabolic steroids. Yeah, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you, I mean, you hate to see it. This sucks for, yeah, uh, for her. I'm sure she's telling the truth. I, look, for me, I'm saying, especially since they moved the Olympics and everyone kind of had a wonky year fitness-wise, I'm saying, just this once, let, let, them everyone, do, yeah. let them do the steroids. Yeah. Let's see what the best of the best is really capable of with... Some yeah. chemical engineering. Steroids don't automatically make you the best athlete. You still got to work. There's still, it's mostly skill. Yeah. It would just be a lot more entertaining to yeah. see some records broken. Uh, and, uh, you know, the Olympic Village, especially when everyone's roided out. Yeah, you're just a human centipede of fucking. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. Exactly. Fucking on the ceiling. Yes. Anyway, well, a delicious... Uh, burrito might be worth ruining your athletic career over. We're not entirely sure about these next items, but at least the East Coast of the United States is getting creative with their massive cicada problem because, folks, cicadas are on the menu. Mm -hmm. And it's not just one or two restaurants that are updating their menus to accommodate these new ingredients. There's a full-blown cicada foodie movement happening, apparently. Yeah. Uh, here's just a few examples of the items that we found being promoted online. Uh, an eatery in New York City called Brooklyn Bugs has introduced their customers to cicada nymph spring salad, cicada nymph guacamole, cicada nymph kimchi, and cicada nymph chocolate with 24 karat gold for dessert. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a spot that revolves around eating edible insect meals. People know what they're getting. What about some other restaurants? Yeah, well, over in Leesburg, Virginia, a local cantina named Cocina on Market is apparently selling out of their cicada tacos. Quote, the chef at Casino Market in Leesburg, Virginia, doesn't start his day in the kitchen. He starts it by looking for cicadas. That's because his Mexican restaurant, located 40 miles northwest of Washington, D.C., has begun to serve up cicada tacos. The chef, Tobias Padovano, said he usually picks up the packs that are around trees or will ask people if he can pick them up on the sides of their houses before leaving with enough to make mm, 30 orders of the tacos. He explains the cooking process, saying, and you boil them to get out all the impurities and everything, and then you dehydrate them. So you give them a nice crunch and texture to them. They are then sautéed in onion and garlic and served alongside avocado, radish, mole verde sauce, and serrano chili with uh, uh, wrapped in a flour tortilla. So 
I mean, this is disgusting, but also, like, so is shrimp. That's the thing is they, these are somewhat <laughs> like, closely related to yeah. shrimp. And that's what people say they taste like. So also, you're kind of, when, when you're cooking it like this, I feel like you're kind of getting rid of any actual flavor that yeah, would have existed Yeah, it's all about the it. texture and just the presence of, like, And the protein. fact that you're eating the cicada. Yeah. But yeah, when you're mixing it up with literally fucking onion, an onion and garlic, and then, like, boiling it and dehydrating it, it's like... All right, what's what's left that isn't just gonna taste like onion and garlic? I still I try you know those like dried fucking worms like the yeah I tried one of those and it would, just tastes like dust. It, I did not like how yeah. it tasted. It's just dry. Yeah, yeah. just crunchy dust. Uh, yeah, I mm. don't know. Anyway, the USA Today article continues. As far as how they taste, they do taste great. Padovana said. Of course, the chef has to try his own food. So when I made the taco for the first time and ate it, I was like, wow, this is actually incredible. And customers have agreed, with most people saying they would order the tacos again. And the popular comparison being that they taste like shrimp. Okay, yeah. There you go, see? Padovano added the restaurant has been at capacity since the tacos have been on the menu, and he's sold out of them every night. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the shrimp comparison seems to make sense, because further south, in D.C. proper, cicadas are being served up in cicada scampi, mm -hmm. which was sampled by... NBC News anchor Hallie Jackson, who said that the dish was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. eh, I tried it. It's like anyone that tries like some, okay. some kind of like food that they're not used to eating. It's just like, sure, that was fine. Yeah, I mean, like generally, if a chef has made it, it's like you're not. It's almost never going to be awful. Yeah, it's going to be like okay. I want to see someone eating them raw. Then I'll be like, okay, maybe, maybe according to this person, they taste all right. It's like when people eat grubs and stuff raw. Mm. Not interesting. And if for some reason all that doesn't sound appetizing, why would it sound unappetizing? Over in Ohio, a local restaurant called The Pizza Bandit is currently <laughs> testing out a Brood X Spicy Thai Cicada Pie, which is exactly what you think it is. A pizza and cicadas on it. Mm -hmm. Though this is just a test run, because according to that local eatery, we're not even sure if we can legally sell you locally foraged cicadas. Yeah, it's a... Look, you, why don't you just buy the pizza from us and then you go outside and you scoop up some cicadas and then dump them all over the pizza. I don't think you do this in California. Although, you know, we, we don't we, have them. Well, but like... We had to come up with peacock uh, we recipes. Have, we have like... Or at least we did. They might have changed it. But the I know we had like pretty strict road kill laws for a while. Hmm. Whereas like if you saw a dead deer, they'd have to like actually come and fucking take it away. You couldn't just take it home and eat it. Because it wasn't safe. Because <laughs> big, big... Oh, man. Well, the, the nanny state says, I can't eat roadkill. The nanny says I can't safe. accidentally kill myself. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, the Ohio might have similar laws. Whatever. Yeah, but down in D.C. and uh, Virginia, apparently they're just going wild with it. Yeah, they're getting loose with it. You so. find it, you eat it. I bet it's pretty expensive too, because these sound like you know, pretty good chefs. I mean, this that is limited time only. Up. Yeah, and it's a limited item, and you have to have the know-how to be able to visually confirm that they are not the fungi-infested cicadas. Yeah, that should be pretty easy to tell, though, as long as they're still. An entire cicada. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, now that you're all hungry, uh, we, we should let you go so you can go grab a snack. But first, we uh, we should obviously mention the very <laughs> prestigious winners of the first annual E3 Video Game Awards, yeah. where the ESA and its hosts presented awards to games that aren't even out yet. And it's actually way more lame than we even could have predicted because they literally had a category for every single event that took place over the past four days of the virtual event. It, it wasn't divided up by genre or anything like uh, most anticipated RPG or racing game or first person shooter. It, none of that. What? It was uh, best game from Ubisoft's showcase. Best game from uh, Take Two's showcase. What? This is stupid. Yeah. So, yeah, not divided up by genre or anything like that. Just which games did a room full of people think had the best trailers from each publisher or developer? Uh, I mean, we'll just leave a link below to the full pointless list. But uh, the only awards that weren't targeted to a specific company were the following. PC Gaming Show Most Anticipated Game, Songs of Conquest. Future Game Show Most Anticipated, Immortality. Most Anticipated Indie Game, Falling Frontier. Best presentation overall, which Xbox and Bethesda won. Mm -hmm. And most anticipated game overall, which went to Forza Horizon 5. It's Forza Horizon, but this time it's in Mexico. Cha -cha 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 -cha. Yeah. I mean, it looks great, <laughs> but it's it's a Forza Horizon game. Yeah. They I mean, are fun. Great, yeah. But this is the best that E3 had to offer. I watched through some of the stuff. 
maybe I hate video games now. Yeah, nothing this year really got me that excited. Like, Battlefield looks cool. Yeah, Battlefield looks cool. Like, Halo's uh, still coming out I, at some I, point. I like the fact that there's going to be another Outer Worlds game, but it, it doesn't sound like they've really done anything for it yet. Yeah, but... there, there was a very <laughs> tongue-in-cheek kind uh, of uh, uh, debut. And it's I, like, here's I, the title screen. I am still, despite hating Bethesda at this point, I am still intrigued by that new space game of theirs, but that you know that's probably not going to be out for like another two years. So Yeah, I mean, yeah, whatever. Uh, the Devolver digital uh, yeah, they had thing some, was... they had some cool stuff. Yeah, they always was, do. It was pretty funny. They came up with a new NFT, yeah. the non fuck with tape. Yeah. It was one single VHS tape. Someone bought it immediately for $1,000. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's fun uh, and they, they just lampooned the whole like uh new games plus subscription model shit so that was fun their games are also great and yeah. pretty much every game they put out is either like 30 fun, bucks <laughs> yeah and they're cheap they're fun and they uh, literally the best soundtracks yeah they're great games. any publisher so look overall pretty underwhelming but again our expectations like yours should have been were set pretty low because we just came off of a year of fucking quarantine yeah and we told you that nothing was going to be ready and that you wouldn't even hit these hiccups until this E3. So, look, just calm down. You play your Halo, yeah. your Battlefield. Meanwhile, good indie games continue to come out. They, so that's, they haven't that's even good. added Waluigi to Smash. So. Oh, they didn't do that? No. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, maybe next year, everybody. Mm-hmm. Anyways, that's it for today's episode. Be sure to watch the most recent episode of Weekly Weird News right over here in case you missed it. Uh, and also a new episode of News Dump. By the way, didn't even realize it. Uh, it was the show. It was uh, the channel's anniversary the other day. We've been on YouTube for three years now. Oh wow! And we've uh, we, in those three years we hit, <laughs> we hit 69 million views. Nice. Yes. So if you want to uh, congratulate us or give us a Father's yeah. Day gift for being your Father's Day dad, is coming up real soon, guys. We, I figured it out because people actually hit us up and we're like, well, "What do you? What, how, how can we send? Don't send anything. Just click the join button. Yeah. Even if you cancel next month. Yeah. If you click the join button, that's the gift. All I want for Father's Day. Is you click the join button. The join button makes you, you get like emojis and shit. It's not yeah. the subscribe button. That's different. Yeah. Don't accidentally unsubscribe. No. Hit the join button. It sends us five bucks. Yeah. That's it. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Anyways, we'll see you soon for another episode. Uh, bye. Bye.